It's transfer deadline day. Welcome back to the Done Deal Show on the Football Terrace. Hit like buttons, subscribe, share the content as well in your group chats, in your family chats, across Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, wherever it may be. It's going to be an important and a big day today. Not only is it transfer deadline day, it is Lady Freya, my beautiful daughter's sixth birthday as well. So I am here for some of the day. I'm, of course, going to be spending time with my daughter as well. But, of course, the team will be here for you. Lots to delve into. I'm going to waste no more time. There's lots of stories. Some big you changes. You turns? You change it. You turns from the other day involving Chelsea and Jaden Sancho. Could they be about to land him? Has he now rejected Juve after the early report suggested he was going to turn down Chelsea to go to Turin? We're looking at Osaman. We're looking at Arsenal and a big deadline day move for them as well. But I wanted to start with Raheem Sterling. Raheem Sterling has been linked to Man United in the last few days. Arsenal getting involved. But... This is as of now, and I'm recalling this at about 8 a.m. in the morning on deadline day. So things can change. It is reported by Graham Bailey that as it stands, Raheem Sterling is set to stay at Chelsea. Talks are still taking place over his future. But as it stands, Arsenal and Manchester United that have been in conversations with him have not been able to agree a deal. So thus far, he has turned down. He is rejected. He has said no to the combination of Man United and Arsenal's offers, coupled with whatever exit package Chelsea are giving him. And I really think this stems into the £70 million debt that Chelsea owe to the player in terms of salary, image rights, bonuses, loyalty bonuses, etc. He said he's happy to take pay cuts at Man United and at Arsenal, but he's turning those deals down because he doesn't want to walk away from all of that money that he has been promised. And I think, look, I understand it. Could that change in the next 12, 13, 14 hours? Absolutely. There could be a U-turn on this. Maybe Chelsea say, okay, we're going to give you 15, but now we'll give you 20. We we were going to give you 20. We're now going to give you 30 million of that package, plus what else you're taking. And Sterling may walk away happy. But as of right now, he is not moving to Arsenal or Manchester United. From United's point, from Arsenal's point of view, what's really interesting is a story came out late last night from Miguel Delaney that said there is a feeling that the transfer market could open up in the final hours due to the number of big clubs who want to sell. There is a belief that this could bring bargains that would not have been possible a few weeks ago. This has been coupled with a report from Sky that Arsenal are amongst a number of clubs, I will add, who are exploring the conditions for a deal for the Bayern Munich winger Kingsley Coman. Now, we know that Arsenal have looked at Raheem Sterling. It now appears they're looking at Kingsley Coman as well. David Ornstein has said on a number of occasions over the last few weeks that a backup winger, somebody to come in who can challenge the Martinelli's, be back up to the Bakayo Sackers, add some extra strength in depth to that area, is all you're going to see from Arsenal between now and the end of the window. I think there is still hope, and I get why from Arsenal fans that a trigger is met for the Victor Jukares, that they do a, you know, that maybe they come in at the, the 11th hour and take an Osaman. I mean, the, the, the dream move for a lot of Gunas is Alexander Isak, but that does look practically impossible at this particular moment in time. But Arsenal fans, I want to ask you, Kingsley Coleman, does that move the needle for you? Is his, av- is his availability good enough to match his ability in the Premier League. We know he's had those injury concerns as well. But I'd love to get your thoughts and feelings. And if you're looking at two players, Coleman and Raheem Sterling, if they're the two that Arsenal are lining up for in terms of an attacking front on deadline day, which of those two would you prefer to go to? Let us know in the comments section below. Now, a big report from Damasio has said that Juve have pulled out of the race to sign Jadon Sancho. The Italian club will not meet Manchester United's current demands. Now, this comes after Fabrice Hawkins said there was a total agreement. Now, I trust Fabrice Hawkins. I do. I'm not saying I don't trust Damasio, but I trust Fabrice Hawkins. I'm going to give you my theory on this. I believe there may have been a moment in time where Sancho has gone going to go to Juve. Juve and Man United agree agree the total package. But I believe that this isn't Juve walking away because of the conditions. I believe this is because Chelsea have convinced Jadon Sancho 
that they're the club for him. Whether I like that, whether you like that, I believe that to be the reality. I think the Italian press is going to push really, really hard that Juve walked away, that Juve didn't like the terms, that Juve couldn't sell players, that Juve couldn't get the deal done. The player wanted us, we wanted him, but the deal was made too difficult. We had to walk away out of principle. My belief, and I keep the same energy on this a lot, is no. I think Jaden Sancho, whether he picked Juve or not, let's just... If you believe Fabrice Hawkins, then he's had a U-turn. If you don't, and you don't think he ever turned down Chelsea, then he still rejected Juve, in my humble opinion, based on the stories. I just don't believe that clubs walk away this at this point when they were so close to getting the player. How are you that close and you weren't sure of the terms? That doesn't make sense to me. Something isn't adding up. But Chelsea have the opportunity here to make what I think is an excellent signing for them. You are going to have a lot of United fans that say good riddance. You're going to have a lot of United fans who say, oh, great, you're buying our flops. Chelsea have bought, bought a dud. Ha, 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 you're giving us, especially if we don't do a player swap deal. And that's the only thing that might scarper this for Chelsea is if they don't want to offer Man United money. They're probably going to have to pay us 25, 30 odd million pounds. Do they have that available? They're C, they wanted to do a player swap. That could be the only stumbling block. But looking at all the different stories from all the different outlets, all the Italians are saying Juve are pulling out. That, for me, is a red flag. I don't think it's as simple as that. If Sancho was as dead set on Juve as the early report suggested, and I'm keeping the same energy here, Juve would get this deal over the line one way, shape or form. In fact, it would strengthen their positions and weaken Man United's as we want him gone. So this is telling me reading between the lines, that he wants Chelsea. Big signing for Chelsea, the potential for absolute greatness. If they, could, if they can recapture his Dortmund form and ability and unleash that on the Premier League, yes, he might come in and be the backup to begin with for Pedro Neto and Noni Madueke, but he has the talent and the ability to be a first-teamer at Chelsea. He really, really does. I'm a little frustrated this is going through, but it isn't going to stop me speaking the truth on how I see this transfer. Sticking to Chelsea, Chelsea have approached Napoli, this was late last night, tonight, and submitted an official bid for Oseman, a loan with an obligation to buy. Chelsea uh, are discussing salary terms with Victor Oseman. It is also stated as well from Fabrice Hawkins that Chelsea's management are in Naples trying to convince Victor Oseman to join them. Now, Sasha Tavalieri and a number of other journalists believe that the Saudi club are leading the race because... Chelsea are not, it's not that they're offering more salary. It's that Chelsea are not getting anywhere near, according to some reports, what Osaman is already being paid. He's on around 300 to 350,000 a week. And so far, Chelsea haven't got near that. They're trying to convince him. They're offering him a good base with lots of incentives. But as of right now, when this is being recorded, it hasn't been agreed. Some outlets are saying that Osaman is going to turn down Chelsea's offer. And he's going to accept the one in Saudi Arabia. Now, I would love to see Osama in, 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 remain in Europe. I think he's too good a talent, too young to go to Saudi right now. And I'm not trying to disrespect the Saudi league. I just don't think it's up to par as of right now. So I believe he should stay. However, I also understand a working class man not wanting to go from 300. And I know this money sounds obscure to other working class people. One, you've got to understand they lose a lot of it in tax. Two, you've got to understand it's a short career for a football player. So what they earn over a 10 to 12 year period has to last them the rest of their lives. And a lot of these footballers have huge charities, huge foundations, and often supporting their wider and extended families. So getting in money is important, and I'll never scoff at that. I think that's a disgrace. So I understand somebody not wanting to take a pay cut at this stage of their life. We don't know the financial commitments that he has that, that, he, that he has in his life. And he might be sitting there saying, I can't even risk not getting the bonuses. I need my 300 grand a week because since I've been on that, on that, you know, whether it's charities, building schools, putting multiple brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, cousins through education, building homes, creating generational wealth. These are things that the work, well, I feel like working class people, like the majority of you and me, should be supportive of. People pulling themselves out of poverty and, and creating that generational wealth. So I understand it. And although people say, no, chase legacy, don't chase money, it's very easy to say when you are not faced with that decision. However, 
I don't believe Chelsea are out of the race right now. That's my humble opinion. As much as people want to stick it to Chelsea, and I get accused a lot of sticking it to them, and I'll call them out when things ain't right, or if there's a big, credible story, I'll report on it and give an opinion. But this idea that Chelsea should be written off, that they don't have Paul, that these deals will fall through, I don't necessarily think that's true at this stage and at this juncture. However, things could change. I haven't even looked at the news. I've been recording this for 11 minutes. It could have changed in the time I made this, which means I've got to record it again. But look, give us your views. Give us your opinions below. Until next time, my people, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you all again soon. Peace.